Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 3 which is an introduction over the Windows operating systems. Now in this chapter we will cover the Windows operating systems and focus on how they are designed and work as well as what they do. Emphasis will be placed on the Windows 7 operating system because it is the primary Windows operating system that is used in today's market. Finally, significant features of the operating system software and various graphical tools will be reviewed. So as you cover the chapter here, we will, uh, the objectives you want to take out from this are how to use Windows to interface with users, files, and folders, applications, and hardware. The other objective we want to focus on during this chapter 3 here is about some of the Windows tools that you can use to examine and support your operating system. All right, essentially an operating system is just software that controls your computer in the following functions. It will provide a user interface for the user, uh, such as being able to perform housekeeping procedures that you request with your computer, um, with your different storage devices, you know, like reorganizing data, deleting files, etc., as well as providing a way for your user to manage the desktop, the hardware, applications, and the data that's contained on the computer. Another function is managing files, such as creating files, storing files, retrieving files, etc., on various different media, such as DVDs, CDs, flash drives, as well as your hard drive. Third function is managing hardware, such as with the BIOS, the basic input output system. These are uh, programs that are permanently stored on hardware devices. And along with function three here with managing hardware you can manage memory which is as you recall a temporary place to store data and instructions as the computer is processing those as well as diagnosing problems with different software and hardware the fourth function is managing applications such as installing and uninstalling various applications on your computer and running applications and managing the interface to the hardware on behalf of that application now Windows 7, which we've been using for many years now and is, temp is in its way of being possibly replaced by Windows 10, is an upgrade from Windows Vista. Windows Vista, if you do some research on that, was uh, not very welcomed by the general users. So Windows 7 um, wasn't out that long in uh, really popular use and the Windows or Microsoft did a quick upgrade to Windows 7 and it was well accepted and then replaced the majority of people using Windows XP and throughout the book we'll make references to different you know Windows operating systems such as XP, Vista, Windows 7 and 10. We won't say much about Windows 8. Uh, every PC support knit technician out there needs to be a power user of Windows 7 and be familiar with some of the uh, different features of Vista and XP in case you come across those when you're out working in the field. Uh, there are some businesses that have yet to switch over from XP even though it went to Sunset. If you don't know, Windows XP did go to Sunset or ended April 8th of 2014. So there's no more security updates or technical support for the Windows XP operating system unless you have the money such as like the United States government who still continues to pay for support because they've yet to make that transition away from Windows XP. Now the graphic here just gives you just kind of a visual representation of how the operating system interfaces between the user and applications along with the hardware components of your computer or peripheral devices to make everything work seamlessly. Now let's talk a little bit about the basic Windows desktop. The desktop is the initial screen that is displayed once your operating system is loaded. The Windows desktop here obviously provides a graphical user interface for you to be able to work with the different features of Windows, software applications, etc. Now Windows 7 and Vista Desktop provide a 3D user interface called the Aero Interface, which was obviously introduced in Vista before being adopted into Windows 7. 
Now the arrow interface is not available for some editions of Windows 7 such as with the starter and home basic editions. Uh, a little bit about Windows 7 um, minimum requirements are that the Windows 7 requires one gigabyte of RAM and a video card that supports DirectX 9 graphics standard and it has to have at least 128 megabytes of graphics memory. Now, Remember that this is just the very basic requirements. Now you do not want to try to run the Windows 7 operating system w with these minimum requirements. Um, some additional information for the minimum requirements is your CPU needs to be at least 1 gigahertz. And the available free disk space for the operating system is 16 gigabytes for the 32-bit Windows 7 operating system and 20 gigabytes for the 64-bit Windows operating system. Now let's talk a little bit about the start menu. Now if you followed along with anything with the Microsoft Windows operating system over the last several years is that one of the pitfalls of Windows 8 and reason that people were not adopting it or accepting it very well is because it lacked the start menu that people have just become accustomed to. Now the start menu here is shown in this graphic here and you can see that there are different parts to the start menu when you go down to the Windows icon in the bottom left of your uh, Windows interface and you click on the Windows icon that will launch the start menu. Now when you click on the start menu you'll notice that there is a user name up here in the top right corner so that you know which account is currently logged on that you are using and you will also notice that there are applications that are used often are listed in the left side here. Now as you use programs more frequently this list will change as time moves on and you can also pin or make different applications always present here in the start menu and we can talk about that later on. Now here in the dark right column here you'll see that this gives users access to libraries, files, operating system utilities. Those are all listed here in the right and that can vary a little bit too depending on how you have your account set up or if you have anything hidden. Because as with most things in the Windows operating system you can customize your start menu and we will talk about that later on. And while I have this graphic up here, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how to launch the applications on your computer. Now you can use the start menu here. As you see, you can click on the Windows icon here, the start button, and then you can select the different programs here, or you can select all programs. You also have a search box down here, search programs and files. You can just click this button and enter the name of a program, even if you only know the keywords for that in the search box and Windows will intuitively look for different programs that meet that criteria so that you can then launch that program that you're or that application that you're wanting to run. You can also use Windows Explorer or the computer window. Now to start the computer window in Windows 7 or even in the legacy operating system Vista you can just click start and then you can select computer here and this will launch the computer window or what's more commonly known as Windows Explorer. And lastly another way to run your application or to launch your application is to just use a shortcut icon that you've created on your desktop whether you automatically create it or if you manually create it. Now if you were mainly going to create a shortcut icon to launch an application you would just go into your you know, my computer or Windows Explorer and find the program, find the executable for it, right click on that and then select create shortcut. You create that shortcut to the desktop or copy that and paste it on there. Now if you need to launch that application simply select it and hit the enter key or just double click on that shortcut icon. Talk briefly now a little bit about the another Windows desktop feature is the Windows 7 Arrow Snap and Arrow Shake. Uh, the Arrow Snap it 
will just automatically maximize a window when you drag it to the top of the desktop. Now if you go ahead and grab the top of your window, pull it upward, it will snap. If you grab a, a top of your one of your open windows and drag it to the left or right, that will snap it into place as well. And that will just fill up half the screen. As you go into Windows 10, we have a different way we're doing this where we can actually uh, use four areas of our screen so we can thus section our screen into quadrants. All right, with the uh, arrow shake, uh, what this really does, um, you just grab the title bar, the top of your active window, and just kind of hold on to it with your mouse, shake it left and right, and you guess it will minimize all the windows except the one that you shake. Now if you do that again, it will maximize everything back into place.